to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Something I may have known and even believed, but have not practiced consistently may equally be responsible for the limitations in my life please look up it is god's desire that as his creation and more so as men that we succeed everybody has a high calling in christ please look up there was nobody who came especially as a man just to come and live a wasted life a frustrated life paying bills just raising children in utter frustration managing sicknesses and infirmity on and then death this is not god's design for men every society the advancement of every society is at the mercy of the quality of the lives of the men that are therein if the devil wants to destroy society quite honestly he may not need to about the women and the children all frustrate the men am i doing something wrong please help me all he needs to do is to frustrate the men and the men themselves will frustrate their wives and frustrate their children for the bible says if you strike the shepherd the sheep will scatter that means if the men succeed and they excel it will tell on their families it will tell on society if you're in agreement with me please say amen. amen now I had the honor and the privilege to have been mentored by a great man that I love so much in life and in death dr. miles Monroe of blessed memory and I am honored even as I stand today doing what he did while he was alive because he was a man whose philosophy and whose idea about God and life was spectacular. In his lifetime, he was an advisor to almost 16 presidents of nations, even as a man of God. He had written several books and at least 40 of them were bestsellers. He was exceptional by every standard, whether from a secular standpoint or from a spiritual standpoint had the largest church in bahamas and was doing exploits for the kingdom in fact when nelson mandela came out of prison he and one other person were among the delegates that were sent to go and receive him and he was a man that truly understood leadership his philosophy of leadership was to transform followers into leaders and then leaders into agents of change my brothers my uncles my fathers I want you to lend me the next 20 to 30 minutes of your attention I assure you that what you are about to learn are not the opinions of people trying to guess and shadow box their way through life like I did acknowledge yesterday I want to do same again that my communication this morning and as always is not in any way to downplay the pedigree of the people here we have very noble personalities at every level seated here and listening to me and I count it an honor and a privilege to be sharing and contributing to our success I by no means we want to downplay our pedigree. I had the honor and the privilege of rushing to the McPherson University just to pray with them before coming here. Awesome facility, brilliant 
leaders there and so i know that there are people here who have tasted success at different levels but can i tell you this i have learned through experience and through mentorship that the enemy to your next level is your current level it is not even failure evades you to succeed but your current level of success can peg you and stop you from rising to the next level write this word success down let's talk for a few minutes about it and then we'll tie up one or two things is god helping us already please write that word success down joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 is a very interesting book joshua was a young man who was taking the baton of leadership from moses and he was afraid already and you know very very discouraged because he was leading a people that even god and moses acknowledged were a stiff-necked people and so he was afraid and when we get to joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 an instruction was given to him that becomes for us a manual to a life of success here's what it says this book amazing that success is with a book this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth it says thou shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success two words that came from the lips of god prosperity and success and he shows us the formula to it are we together praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord amen so i ask you to write the word success down to succeed means to do well in its basic understanding the idea of success means to succeed means to excel to succeed means to advance to succeed means to surpass ordinary standards please write it down every one of us seated here listening to me and as many who will follow listening online today or any other day whether we admit it or not there is a desperate craving and a desire within us to succeed and find ourselves make progress in fact I'm glad that there are doctors in our midst psychologists will tell us that one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress you find fulfillment to the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress can I tell you this the frustrations that we face in our lives our families our career that eventually translate into ill health are largely a product of a perception that we are not succeeding when you are given the gift of time and it looks like you are unable to make any good out of your time and then it becomes more frustrating when you are surrounded by contemporaries who are advancing not from a standpoint of jealousy but their advancement kills your excuses are we together men today in our world are an endangered species doctors will tell us that it seems as though women seem to have a higher lifespan than men more so african men it is said i don't know what the current statistics are but it is said that the average lifespan for an african man is about 48 years if that is correct that's a terrible announcement what suddenly happens to a young boy full of fire and ambition becomes a teenager becomes an adolescent now begins to run and support a family and then 30 40 50 60 years down the line respectfully speaking is now a frustrated man looking at the world from a very painful standpoint this is the graph of the average man's life born goes to school gets a job if fortunate or runs a business gets a wife and children now from that standpoint 
is like a downward plunge of frustration hit by a plethora of problems and bills and family problems and witchcraft and sociological problems and problems that downplay and demean his relevance now by the time he's getting to late 40s early 50s he begins to have all kinds of signs of problems heart conditions high blood pressure headache arthritis all kinds of things and now the man is afraid because at 50 maybe 55 he's not built a house the children may not be as responsible as he intended for them to be his family life does not be it's not a reflection of his idea as a young man and if not fortunate it begins to affect his spiritual life in the name of jesus christ the man in this place will change this narrative the world today is full of frustrated men so frustrated that during month the world receives remembers and celebrates mothers but when it is father's day most times it is that morning people remember that today is father's day because they happen to go to the internet to search for something and find out and they casually say father and say this was what i wanted to become if not then pay attention is god speaking to us we may not be able to do anything about yesterday but we can do something now to correct the time that is left show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest at the end of your life you will be remembered for two things the solutions that you produced the lives that you changed or the troubles and the frustrations that you left behind we have the gift and the privilege of life and let me share with us in this first session God's idea of success and the dimensions of success and then we will talk a bit about becoming a voice listen it is never God's idea that in a whole generation and a dispensation we have just one or two people excelling and glorifying God with their gifts and their talents it is painful when you watch television and you see those who were once your classmates changing destinies affecting lives and all that is left with you is bitterness and anger why is my life this way this is not to annoy you this is to challenge and provoke you are we together having understood the basic concept of success and having understood also that a dimension of your fulfillment is tied to your success Please do not downplay the passion and the instinct for success. It was put there by God. There is no man who will indefinitely live in failure and find fulfillment. You may ignore it for a while, but it will haunt you and you will pay your life, you will spend your lifetime paying that price. There are six indices to measure success. And I want to state them very quickly. So every time you say, I want to succeed, I want to break it down for us by the Spirit of God. There are six indices. If you do not succeed by these parameters, you are a failure. Can we begin, sirs? Number one, the first index that is used to measure your success, your progress, your spiritual progress, your spiritual health. Please write it down. 
the first biblical index to measure success if you want to test if you are successful or if you are on the path to success as a man the first biblical index is your spiritual health here's how the bible puts it we are rushing for time it says that you prosper and you be in health even as thy soul prospereth what shall it profit a man it says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul we have men today in our society who use their godliness and their spirituality as would i call it the collateral for success the kind of success that happens at the expense of your spiritual life your spiritual fire your spiritual fervency is a demonic and dangerous success there is a kind of success called good success please say after me good success that means there is bad success the kind of success where as you are rising financially or as you are rising in influence your spiritual life is suffering i made up my mind that if i fail in any area of my life let it not be my spiritual life great men great leaders listening to me this this morning is a call for some of us to restore our spiritual passion this appetite to make it this appetite to make it study the word i do not have time pray i do not have time our families today respectfully speaking may be a reflection of the spiritual decadence that are happening in our lives do you know i believe it is a cause for a man to wait for his children to pray for him no no you should be the one to lead them in understanding spirituality the first idea of spirituality from a child should come from what he sees his father do not what his father saying doing something more than gold i've got something more than gold something more than gold i've got something more than gold if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen to me. Let me challenge us men. We complain today that our young people are full of moral decadence, full of unseriousness and irresponsibility. My question is who led them every time a sheep is lost the shepherd must take responsibility it's in the bible until god grants us grace to raise men and women of spiritual excellence men who pay attention to spiritual excellence above and beyond any index for achievement spiritual success is not the only dimension of success but in order of priority it is number one let your children find you praying in the morning let your children find you fasting let your children find you in with passion for the word let your children find you with character and integrity so the first index to measure success is our spiritual progress can i tell you this let me with every sense of respect and honor remind us that the day is going to come if christ tarries every one of us will be no more it's an uncomfortable truth but it's a truth that we know if christ tarries one day you and i will have to sign out of this realm I used to sing an old hymn in the seminary it says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only remembered by what we have done only remembered only remembered only 
only remembered by what we have done thus would we pass from the earth and its toilings only remembered by what we have done this is a call this morning to examine our lives spiritually your relationship with god and the level of spiritual fire if you find out that somewhere in your pursuit for a job your pursuit for a political career your pursuit for a name your pursuit for fame you have left jesus somewhere this is a conference that challenges you to rush back and say i am back oh lord i'm not ashamed today i am 55 years i dropped you when i was 22 because i wanted to go abroad by force now i am back no matter what you have if jesus is not part of them and if jesus is not above them have nothing are we blessed second index very quickly the second index according to scripture to measure success is your level of mental transformation please write it down i'm glad and honored that i'm talking to men the second index that measures the success of a man is not cars is not money the level your level of mental transformation you are successful only to the degree to which you sustain superior belief systems please write that expression down superior belief systems superior belief systems for as he thinketh in his heart the bible says so is he not so he will become for as he thinketh in his heart it is very important Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Let's run through a few scriptures, please. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. I want us to read it together if it's possible. If we have that projected, 23 and verse 7, Proverbs. If you can see it projected, please let's read together. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not so he will become. You are literally your life gravitates along the lines of your belief systems if there is anything wrong with your results the problem results are report cards that attempt to honor your belief systems please pay attention please pay attention if i find out that my life is commanding failure I'm always having financial problems, family problems, fulfillment problems. It is not the problems. The problems are a report card that something about my belief system keeps attracting limitations to my life. The real deliverance for a man is not just casting out demons. The real deliverance is reconstructing your belief system so that you have what the Bible calls the mind of Christ Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus I admit to you that many of us are sincere God fearing well-meaning people but largely we may have sustained belief systems that came from culture that came from our past that came from poor mentorship that came from our failures that came from wrong opinions we may have sustained these belief systems and today they are producing negative results in our lives belief systems that sponsor greed belief systems that sponsor laziness belief systems that sponsor irresponsibility belief systems that sponsor entitlement when you come to god among the many things he does is to reconstruct your belief system there are many people who believe today that their success is in the hands of someone else 
and they believe that somebody should succeed and come and make them successful this is the mindset sadly speaking that the average respectfully speaking the average young man in this country has an entitlement mentality let my father die and give me land let my father die and give me a house there are even young people who continue to anticipate the death of their parents in their lifetime they are already discussing where are the papers to this land where are the papers to this belief systems we are products of our belief systems your belief system represents your ideology a sum total of your philosophies what do you know about god and who taught you what do you know about satan and who taught you what do you know about succeeding and who taught you what do you know about failure and who taught you it matters the construction of our belief systems there is a way the bible says that cement right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death let me tell you something growing up i had the opportunity to see some of the finest most godly and most sincere people that i would say then were around my life but my life was surrounded by people who were truly failures by several standards i saw my own father do his best great man i'm privileged to still have him alive and he was one person that i saw god help even among his contemporaries to rise and make progress but there was a widespread from the region where i came from there was a widespread of failure it was like a signature and i said this could not be god's design how come people would live in mediocre mediocre mindsets i knew that something was wrong and i made up my mind as a very little boy that in the name of jesus i would not live a life of failure and defeat that i would live a life that will represent the purposes of god that i'll have the privilege and the honor of contending for transformation until we help the nations call upon the name of the lord and glory be to the lord that project is still ongoing and successfully so hallelujah listen to me you must make up your mind that you will be transformed let me tell you a little story sir years ago there is a hotel called premier hotel in ibadan some of you know where i'm talking about it's uphill i came into ibadan many years ago i did not even have transport fare complete transport fare and i remember entering that hotel because someone i was to meet asked me to wait for him there i stood there and i looked at the place i said my goodness what a nice place i saw the faces of the people there it was night late into the night and the person disappointed me he said he would not be able to make it where would i spend the night now i didn't know anywhere and i would dare not even say i want to ask how much that place is true story because i could not afford it i was fortunate as i was strolling around i found out there was a church not too far there fortunately it was a friday and they were having night vigil i went and i spent i had night vigil there at least if i cannot sleep let me pray true story now let me tell you this three years after that time i had a program in ibadan and when they picked me it was a convoy of about five to six cars and they were taking me to my lodge guess where they took me when i saw them climbing uphill 
I put my hand and I said, my goodness, my God. This time around, it was not in shame and dishonor. I still saw the same faces. Some of them were still there. And they took me to the highest suit. And when they kept me there and locked the door, I lay on the ground and rolled down. I said, only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And only a fool can say, God does not lift men. Listen to me. They have a little swimming pool outside. And all these, my dear people, they were there swimming and I was watching them from my window. I said, it's not your fault. My, my protocol and they were swimming and enjoying themselves. And then I remember the Bible says a good man must live an inheritance for his children's children. Let me prophesy over someone in the name of Jesus Christ where you have seen shame and reproach after this conference by prophecy go forward go forward go forward go forward advance in the name of Jesus Christ anyone who has said you will see shame all your life I stand by the God of heaven and I prophesy to you in their lifetime they will watch you rise please sit down Please sit down and pay attention. Mental transformation. I do not mean to sound arrogant. And I pray that you forgive me if I sound so. I'm only taking this opportunity because I'm talking to men. And I hope and trust that what I'm saying might help to challenge you. Listen to me. The color of my skin did not change. The sound of my voice did not change. My height did not change. The only thing that changed was my mind. No matter what changes in your life, if your mind remains the same, your result will remain the same. The government can change, your life will not change. Your location can change, your life will not change. The person you are praying for to die can die and yet nothing will change but if everything remains the same and your mind changes i promise you your life will change the real problem is not disfavor the real problem is not the senator who has refused to sign your contract the real problem is that there is something wrong with our philosophies and our belief systems the starting point for true success second only to your relationship with god is your philosophy Abraham from where thou art lift up your eyes not where you want to go from where you are lift up your eyes the greatest miracle that happened in my life second only to salvation and my encounter with the Holy Spirit is the miracle of sustaining a superior belief system are we blessed Number three, very quickly, the third index to measure success is the degree to which you excel in your God-given assignment. Write it down, please. The degree to which you excel in your God-given assignment. Your assignment can have an expression of your ambition. Your assignment is that which you were sent to do here on earth it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me lo i come in the volume of the book nobody here is a biological accident you can spend your life escorting others in destiny or you can find your place in life the degree to which you excel in your assignment jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 God was speaking to the young man, Jeremiah. And he said, before I form you, help us media. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I satisfied thee and ordained thee. To ordain means to commission, to legitimize an operation. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Again, Dr. Miles Munro of blessed memory would say 
the wealthiest place is not the gold mines of South Africa the wealthiest place is not the oil mines in the Middle East the wealthiest place is the cemetery where books that should be written were not written where policies that can change nations were not written the cemetery truly is the wealthiest place where apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers who would have manifested their destiny and blessed nations they died without becoming where businessmen financial apostles millionaires and billionaires who would supply resources for kingdom advance they died without manifesting your assignment answers the question why why are you here jesus said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me in fact here's how he put it i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh the night cometh where no man can walk again at any level you can still find purpose and make them at any level at any level you can find purpose please listen to me don't say i am too old ask abraham don't say i am too young ask jeremiah don't say i am too weak ask gideon the bible is full of men that kill our excuses for purpose at whatever age stage and level there is still room to start make up your mind that there is something that god has put within me can i tell you this in your assignment is your relevance in your assignment is your honor in your assignment is your influence a mango tree does not produce posters a mango tree does not produce publicity material a mango tree is not called apostle or prophet all it does is to have big mango fruits if the mango tree does not have fruit men will pass it without knowing but the moment fruit starts to come it will start calling people and you will stand under it and even climb the mango tree if your life becomes like that mango tree no man will ignore you not when you are using your gift to serve a generation this therefore defines for us the secret of frustration if nobody is following you and nobody is placing a demand upon your life and your destiny the diagnosis is that you have not found your place in destiny the consequence of not finding your place in destiny is that you will be angry you will be frustrated that's why society is full of jealous and angry people praying for others to fail as a consolation and a succor to their own failure is God speaking to us you must challenge yourself this morning that in the name of Jesus Christ I will walk in the path of purpose in the name of Jesus Christ the books that must be written in my lifetime must be written in the name of Jesus the money that my life should bring to the kingdom I will not relent until that happens can I challenge us men God rested only on the seventh day if you are not in the seventh day do not rest don't rest on the second day don't rest on the third day God only rested on the seventh day number one first index your spiritual progress number two your level of mental transformation are we still together please number three your assignment the degree to which you have discovered your divine assignment you can go to bed happy and you can wake up happy if you are not working in purpose there is no reason why you should be claiming long life the bible says i shall not die but live and declare not just live and roam around the justification for longevity is that you are using the time to advance the kingdom 
you become untouchable to the degree to which your life supports kingdom come hmm. number four very quickly the fourth index to mental success is your health and physical well-being i'm very glad i was told that there is a session about mental health and so on and so forth the fourth index to measure success for any man seated here and listening to me is your health and your physical well-being i have a confession to make i didn't used to pay as much attention to my health as i do now do you know why because you see and and this may be a, a, a word of a word of advice for someone especially people in ministry one of the fathers of faith called me in the east after preaching in his conference and he called me he said apostle let me give you an advice be careful africans kill their prophets he said you must pay attention to your health and because of realities like the miraculous divine health are we together and all these spiritual realities they usually for many people become the justification for careless living we eat anyhow we live anyhow and what we do not know that every time we are administering death upon ourselves it is painful to labor so much and not have the opportunity to enjoy your sacrifices of years because of carelessness your physical well-being and your health i made up my mind that from that time until forever i will pay attention to my health i had the honor of seeing uncles fathers senior colleagues i saw very agile and happy people become weak people now please don't feel sad if you are here and there's something wrong with your health in the name of jesus we are praying and we believe for the power of god to bring you healing in jesus name but can i tell you this there are most people today if they had paid attention to any healed health from its infancy it would not be beyond the level of management usually we just ignore it and we call it faith until it deteriorates to a level where it becomes an issue of concern. We must pay attention to our health. One scripture again that will help you. And God rested. Very powerful scripture. It is good to rest. It is good to sleep. We need our bodies for a long time. And we must obtain grace from God. I can't remember where I was traveling to. While I was traveling, the driver was driving so fast. And I asked him a question. It was, okay, I was going for a meeting. And he was running so fast. And I asked him a question. I said, are you the one going for the meeting? He said, no. I said, why are you rushing with me like this? People have died just for careless driving. Are we in agreement? On a road that is not a trunk, a road, they are still driving at 120 and 140. And in the next five minutes, they will still stop. No. Please, let's take responsibility over our longevity and our physical health. One of the ways that you keep yourself alive is to protect the kind of information that is around your environment. I tell you, our world is full of negative things that can depress you in less than 24 hours as a personal principle i am very disciplined about the information that comes around my ears why because there are millions of people depending on my knowledge of god depending on the truths and the sermons that come for them i cannot be so selfish to punish millions of people by not guarding my heart jealously you never find me around people gossiping speaking talking about this i don't have that time i'm on a project you must protect yourself the Bible says, listen very carefully. The Bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones. Negative news, bad news. 
true story i pray my father does not watch this this broadcast because of what i'm about to say one time my dad called my mom and said she should never make cabbage for him again or something like that i said cabbage cabbage that is a blessing do you know what happened he was watching a documentary <laughs> And in that documentary, they were talking about cabbage. And I don't know what is it that cabbage carries. And they started explaining a few things. And I said, you see, for someone is happy about the gift of cabbage. And a man who had eaten cabbage all his life, if we were to kill you, you would have been dead now. And just because of a five or ten minutes marketing, you now reject cabbage. In the name of Jesus, let obtain grace to guard our eyes, our ears, and every information that comes to us. Now, in as much as I am pro-health, at the same time, I know that everything God gave us, if it came from God, it will not destroy you. Is that true? Because if you are done listening to the news, and food experts are done with you you will live a fasted life forever because it will look as if there are demons in every food they will tell you orange has something that can kill you banana has something that can kill you even rice that you are eating you are about to die tomorrow and at the end of it there is nothing again to eat the bible teaches us how to eat well give thanks when you give thanks <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything you find in the Bible that they ate, you can eat it. If Jesus ate it, he ate fish, he ate bread, he ate corn, he ate figs. Manna came from heaven. It was even the angels themselves that sent it. Let's be careful. It's good to protect us, guard the information that we hear. Let's try another mic and see. Praise God. Are we still together? Very quickly, I have two more and we'll wrap up. Number five is God helping us this morning. The fifth index to measure success biblically is your financial prosperity. This is the fifth biblical index to measure prosperity and success no matter how much you succeed if it does not translate into your financial well-being you are in trouble the subject of finance has been quite a controversial one all across the body of Christ with very sharp divides there are people who absolutely believe in the necessity of financial resources for their well-being their families and the advancement of their lives and then the other side of the pendulum we have people who for whatever reason may seem to have a problem with the blessing of the lord in both cases i know that there are exaggerations there are people who the context of their communication as far as finance is concerned is carnality materialism and all they teach you is just for self-aggrandizement you know there is just a promotion of flesh however let me submit to you that if you ever subscribe for a life of poverty it is a dangerous and a defeated life a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity financially speaking your attention and your heart still being on jesus while you live a life that is meaningful and useful can i tell you this lack of financial resources will cause you more pain than demon spirits i assure you if i ask all of us to submit prayer requests right now just write two things that you want god to do in your life i may be wrong correct me if i am but over 80 percent of us here our prayer request will have one expression or the other of financial advancement am i right if i'm correct shout amen it takes money to build a good house 
it takes money to give your children good education it takes money to live well yourself financial prosperity gives you options it grants you the grace to live a life of integrity it's a terrible thing to live your life worrying about money lack of financial resources can produce a plethora of compromises many times when we talk about when we talk about our children who compromise here and there they do not compromise because they have all the abundance they need it is lack of those financial resources that eventually lead to compromise finances we must trust god and obtain grace that god will bring us into financial sabbaths we must trust god for grace that god will bless us even financially i made up my mind that as a minister of the gospel and as a leader that i will never raise a people who are just spiritually on fire listen there is an angle of influence that is controlled by the availability of financial resources there is a degree of financial availability that must be there to escort you to the corridors of power and influence you cannot separate influence you cannot separate um well-doing from the availability of financial resources i always say it this way the name of jesus is very heavy it takes financial resources to lift it up for the nations to see hallelujah the last index and then we'll wrap up to measure success is quality destiny relationships you are only successful to the degree to which you build quality destiny relationships if you ever will be fruitful in life you will have to do it on the basis of relationships everything in life produces on the basis of relationships it takes a relationship between a husband and a wife to produce children it takes a relationship between a man and the holy spirit to produce a life of exploits our world is relational if you do not understand the principles of relationships you might live a life of failure and utter defeat in my final session i'm going to be teaching us on the concept of fulfillment and one of the things that we'll be touching on is relationships i have benefited today from profitable and meaningful relationships relationship with god relationship with the holy spirit relationship with mentors and fathers relationships with colleagues and contemporaries relationship with sons daughters and proteges and mentees we live our lives immersed in relationships woe betides a man who looks back and finds out you are alone the bible says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just saying it in the context of marriage alone if you look back and there is nobody no shoulder you can cry on our society is full of lonely people wealthy but lonely educated but lonely there are parents in old age all their children desert them and they are alone here's what the bible says in the multitude of men is the king's honor have you been blessed this morning a quick recap in one minute before i wrap up my session the lord brought to our understanding this morning the idea of success that success means to excel to do well to advance and we said that psychologically speaking and even spiritually speaking there is a dimension of your fulfillment that is tied to progress you cannot feel fulfilled when you feel stagnated when you feel you are a failure 
and that God is not against our success he used two words for Joshua prosperity and success and that I said there are six biblical indices to measure a man's success so when you say I am successful in the kingdom we must test what you have said against these six parameters number one your spiritual progress we said number two your level of mental transformation sustaining superior belief systems number three the extent to which you excel as far as your god ordained assignment is concerned number four your health and physical well-being number five the availability of financial resources the degree to which you are able to do well having financial resources and using it effectively for your own comfort your family the advancement of the kingdom and betterment of society and finally the degree to which you sustain quality relationships that help you know god help you preserve your values and help you contribute your quota to the advancement of the kingdom and nation building if you excel in these six areas then indeed you are successful can i tell you this based on these parameters even five over six is failure you must excel in all of them let me wrap up with this scripture genesis 24 verse 1 please let's arise as we pray genesis 24 verse 1 media please help us this is the last scripture genesis 24 and verse 1 please read with me if everyone if you can see it read with me ready one to read and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things now you are going to put your name where abraham is and read it as a prophecy and then we'll pray are you ready now and joshua selman was old and well stricken in old age and the lord had blessed joshua selman in how many things how many things turn it into a prayer please lift your voice thank you lord for this word i decree and declare as a visionary man i am making progress i advance spiritually i advance mentally i advance as far as my assignment and my god ordained destiny is concerned my career and my pursuit i advance in my health and my physical well-being i advance financially no poverty no lack i make definite intentional progress i advance relationally is someone praying father speak to us and grant us grace again oh god the bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion take away shame and reproach from our lives grant us grace to advance intentionally lord in this second session we pray in jesus name that our hearts are open we have the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles lord once the word comes let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let those who have lost things receive restoration let chains that have helped people release them now and jesus be glorified in jesus name amen and amen the lord bless you and honor you again please be seated thank you it's been so inspiring for me myself just sitting back and watching the other aspects of the service the testimonies and every other thing it is good that we devote time to spend in the presence of the lord to grow to be built to be established the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish in the courts of our god then it says that even in old age they will be fat and they will be flourishing this final session is one that I believe will inspire and bless us in no small way we run a school of ministry and um, it's been on for eight years now 
and in one of the courses i teach the students on the concept of fulfillment and the lord just placed it very strongly in my heart to just speak a few words along that line because there is only one thing that is greater than success fulfillment if you are successful alone and not fulfilled you are still a failure hallelujah so we're going to discuss fulfillment uh, for a few minutes now this session is divided into two the first half of it will be spent just teaching us further and revealing to us by the spirit of god the keys that will help us to do exploits and then the second half of it we're going to pray do we love prayer and so we're going to pray and in that prayer by the grace of god we're going to be rebuking chains and destroying everything that is not of god it is true that we have tabernacle to teach and to learn but we must give room for the power of god to come and set the captives free and turn the lives of people around and move people forward you must go forward and if our god is for us then what could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what can stand again and if our god is for us then what could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what can let me start tonight again? or this session by prophesying to you that in the name of jesus the one who died and rose again and the one who sent me here everything that has kept you in the same position i stand by the god of my covenant and i declare whatever it is we scatter it now we scatter it now by the power of the holy spirit please turn it into a prayer in one minute everything that has limited me limited my family limited my destiny i come by the blood of the lamb here at this men's conference we declare be scattered be destroyed in the name of jesus are there people of prayer here in he must let you go it's a say unto pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me you are praying in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye